Hey y'all, welcome to Chef Outdoors. Here we are again. We broke our stuff so you don't have to. <laughs> we got a bilge down here. Uh, it's not pumping out water. We leave the boat in the water a lot. We got to make sure uh, that the bilge is working. We don't want the boat to sink and then that'll be a whole nother video, but we're not doing that. We're going to try not to make that video. We're going to make fixing the bilge video. So y'all stay tuned and check this out. Remember, subscribe to the channel, like and share. Subscribe now so you can help me spread the word, you know. So anyway, check it out. It's going to be a great video. Stay tuned. Uh, bilge maintenance uh, 101 here. Hey, y'all. So we got a bilge pump here. I'm right here. Popped it out a little bit. Um, runs off the float switch. So when the boat's sitting in the water, it'll, uh, if it gets water in it, the pump will turn on and, you know, get the water out of the boat. Um, so we're, for some reason, it ain't working. If you see, no pumpy pumpy. So the connection's bad, the pump's bad, or the float switch is bad, and well, we gotta find out which. So there's power lead coming in. So there's the power lead going to the pump. So we're done. We're gonna cut a little bit of this stuff back just so we can get a good reading and we'll reheat shrink everything when we're done. It's no big deal. We just wanna make sure we got power. And if we do, great if we don't well well then we need power any of these wires could be bad and salt water if there's like a little bit of um cut in the wire the whole wire will rot out so here's my negative and there's my meter and there's my positive and we got good voltage so that means since we got good power that it is either the float switch or it is the pump. So we've eliminated the power problem. So now we got to check the pump. So I still got the ground. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut into the other side of the float switch. See this side was the power from the battery going to the float switch. And then when the float switch goes up, it transfers power to the power side of the bilge pump. So now I'm going to cut into the wire here. And some people will just poke through these. I just want to make sure I got a good connection. I'd rather Make sure I reheat shrink everything, especially when it's in the bilge like this, because I mean, you want to make sure it works. This is not something you don't want not to work. So make sure you do it right. So I got the float switch up, which is engaging the power. And then we're going to see if it transfers it. So here's the power lead on the other side of the float switch. And then where's my ground? Here's my ground. So we're going to check power. Okay, I got nothing, which leads me to believe, so there's zero, zero there, that the float switch is bad. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to bypass the float switch and hook it directly to the pump just to check the pump. Yep. Now, if you have any fumes in your bilge, you don't want to do this or you want to put a blower on and get the fumes out because theoretically, if I attach this pump directly to the battery, it could spark, which if there's fumes in the bilge, could ignite the fuel, the fumes. So let's not, you know, be careful. Don't do dumb stuff which I'm an expert at doing dumb things, so, but, you know, I got a lot of years of messing up to, uh, you know, for my expertise of stupidity. All right, so theoretically, if I touch this here, this should turn on. And, hey. And it does. We got a beautiful bilge pump. Okay. So we know that the float switch is bad. So we're going to rip this float switch out right here. You can see that. It's right there. And we are going to put a new float switch in, and then this will be back in business. So we got to go get that float switch and make it happen. All right, y'all. So we know the float switch is bad. I'm just going to remove this float switch. All right. There's usually one or two screws holding them in, depending on the float switch. Uh, goes into a, an area usually where they uh, fiberglass a piece of wood into the hull, just so your uh, screw has something to screw into. See, there's like two different areas on here. You can screw one there and one there, but we usually just put one in it because you know, that's what we usually do. Anyway, probably supposed to put, you know, multiple. Anyway, we're going to crypt this here. This is the hot lead. All right, old nasty float switches out. Strip this power lead. Get it ready for a new connection. Pump it in here's the main ground. I want to redo that connection also since I'm here. Always use some good heat shrink butt connectors, especially in salt water. And what I will do is I will use a different area of my crimps. There's like a flat spot in these crimps right here. So I try not to break through the plastic sheathing so that it's a good seal. Okay, the flat end of my crimps. 
so I don't bust through that sheathing. So you got a nice good crimp there. Got our new float switch here. Now one end of this is gonna be hooked to a uh, battery or power lead, whatever, maybe a fuse block, whatever you like. And then the other end will be connected to the hot lead on the um, on the build. But again, I wanna you know make sure I use a nice flat crimp so I don't bust through the sheathing of the butt connector. So it's a good secure Very important. heat shrunk connection because these things will rot out so quick. Like you have no idea how fast. It's ridiculous how salt water and electricity eat through everything. <clears throat> And that's a good solid connection so that one's good we'll mount this in a minute but i want to go ahead and um before i mount it i want to and heat shrink everything i want to make sure i hook it all up and test it so here's another uh buck connector heat shrink right here make sure you got the right size again i'm going to use the flat crimp area of my my electrical uh, component crimper here my pliers Make sure you don't bust through the sheathing. You want a good secure connection. Here's the other side of the power lead. We're gonna put this side in now. Okay. Dumb question. Mm -hmm. Does it matter which gray wire goes where? I mean, they no. Does not matter which gray wire goes where, because all it is is it's just completing a circuit. A circuit yeah. yeah. Okay. So it does not matter which gray wire goes where, because when the float switch comes up, it completes the circuit. And that's just that's the power. The power transfer yeah so here we are here's the ground we're doing the ground now and before i heat shrink all this and, and finish installing everything i want to make sure it works so i'm gonna go ahead and crimp this one make sure you got a good crimp on it you always want to make sure they don't pull out and that's just the ground that goes yep. from the pump to the right this is going to a ground block or the battery mm -hmm. Bill just the float switch is up already. <laughs> Here we go. We don't need to transfer power just yet. I want to make sure it's in there all the way so it makes a good seal when you heat shrink it too. Okay. Now we're gonna give these a good tug just to make sure that they're in there good. And then here we go. All right, we're gonna test the float switch. Here's the pump running. Pumps off. Pumps running. Pumps off. Okay. We're going to go ahead and screw this back in. That's probably where we're going to keep it. What you want to make sure is that this float switch is not going to get stuck. So, let's see if we can see the float switch down there. Yeah. So, you see this float switch will not get stuck on anything. It's not going to hit this. It's not going to hit this. We're going to tie wrap all these out of the way. You want to make sure your float switch swings free and clear so it doesn't hit anything. Okay. And it works. We're going to heat shrink these now and we're going to tie wrap all these wires up and then uh, should be pretty ready. Good to go. Um, I always tell everybody that, you know, build your maintenance is huge. Throw a little bleach in here to get some of this mildew and algae because you get enough algae in this, it'll actually stop your float switch from working. Um, so it's always good to throw a little bleach or even a little Dawn or just, you know, bilge clean. There's all kinds of products out there just to keep it clean, you know. Uh, something we've been lacking a little bit on. Um, hasn't given us much trouble at this point, but you definitely want to keep the algae down in the bilge because if this thing gets held up, then it don't work. You know, if it gets held down, I should say. Uh, it won't turn up and turn the bilge on. All right, so this is all wired up now. We're going to tie wrap it and heat shrink everything. So, you know, again, if this bilge... Uh, has gas fumes in it do not use an open flame you don't want to blow yourself up a heat gun is what i prefer but we brought this today so this is what we're using and it's just a little uh, little lighter torch just to make sure we got all this sealed up so try not to burn the crap out of it <laughs> um we don't want to melt it or start any fires down here you know it's one of the reasons i do prefer heat guns it usually doesn't melt as bad um the torch is pretty hot Torch gets hot and um, start a fire, so uh, you got to be careful. But we want to make sure you melt this completely. A lot of some of these heat shrink connectors have like a little epoxy in them, a little plastic that comes out. We want to make sure it's got a good seal. So there's one. There's another one. I think we got three. So, all right, that's pretty good. 
Huh, we're gonna bind all these wires up here. Up out of the bilge, up out of the bilge, very important. All right, buddy, where well, we got some tie wraps. I can put these up here, you know, like this, just to get them out of the bilge is very important to me. Nothing fancy, just try to be clean. Clean all this up. Check it. Perfect. Bilge pump's working great. We're ready to roll. All right, y'all, so this is gonna be the end of our bilge maintenance project for today. Uh, nice simple project very successful make sure your connections are good uh, make sure your wires are good sometimes you get into some of these wires and they're rotted out internally make sure you put new ones in or cut them back till you get good wire that's got good uh, amperage voltage flowing through it make sure your float is clear of all debris that your bilge pump is clear of all debris that it may suck in um, make sure you clean your bilge um, that it has nothing that'll obstruct the uh, pumping of the water or the float switch from turning on the pump but thanks for joining today. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share, and uh, leave a comment below.